Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And together as a married couple, we're going ahead and we're re-watching, reviewing, and ranking all the DC movies in the DC Extended Universe, except this one was a first time watch. This is our in theaters review, our first one of Birds of Prey. So it's not chronological like we did for the Marvel Universe. We're actually going to skip ahead because it was really cool to see a movie in theaters for once instead of rewatching yes. something we've seen. Yes, it was great. Love it or leave it, lead character. There's really only one lead character. That's just it. First off, we have a problem with the lead character category because we have always done a lead male and lead female lead character. Or two lead males or two lead females, if this one was going to be the case. In the past, if it's warranted, we have done two lead males or two lead females. However, this movie really only has one lead, yeah. and that is Harley Quinn. So for me, this category is a love it. Uh, I think Harley Quinn is human. She's obviously got flaws, but she's also got a heart in there, and they do a good job of showing us that. Um, that may or may not be a benefit for a Harley Quinn, and I'm have a feeling you're going to debate me on that. But I thought the whole female breakup scenario was very real. She's obviously an incredibly attractive woman. I So I just think there was a lot going for her in this role. And I think as an actress, she delivered on it. So I love it. For me, I think they try to make Harley Quinn too much of a sympathetic character. And they try to they lean too heavily and try to make her a normal person. Like, you know, oh, she's just like us. She goes through breakups just like we do. And, you know, and she's... She's really smart. She's got a PhD and everything. But in Suicide Squad, they set her up to be someone that is crazier than the Joker and just kind of just more unhinged. Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. She's crazier than him and more fearless. There is the clip. That is that is proof of Amanda Waller saying that, you know, she is crazier than the Joker and she pushes things more. She didn't do that in this one. There was too much focus on a relationship that I didn't care about. Um, they didn't give us uh, a reason to care about Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship in Suicide Squad. In fact, Joker was a big reason why people didn't like Suicide Squad at all. Uh, so seeing her go through this stuff, you know, I don't really want to necessarily empathize with Harley Quinn. Um, I want, you know, she's a villain and I kind of like it, the fact that she's someone that is not any like anybody that I know. I get that this is the emancipation of Harley Quinn. It's supposed to show that she can stand on her own two feet and she needs to have a journey. She needs to have somewhere like to grow and, and, and to get to. I get all that. I just think that there was maybe a better way to do it. Okay, moving on to side characters. I got it that time. You did get it that time. I'm very happy. <laughs> Uh, so this movie was, uh, it, it's, it had the Birds of Prey, so it had a lot of side characters in it. You might be seen a little bit if you follow, like, comic book things or Hollywood movie things. A little bit about the name change for this movie. Yeah. Um, it's, they, they claim they're not changing it. Here's the thing. It's called Birds of Prey. It's not really a Birds of Prey movie. Birds of Prey becomes, like, the footnote at the end of the film, which is like, yeah. oh, yeah. These three go on to be the Birds of Prey. It, honest to God, it's a Harley Quinn movie. It feels like they had a Harley Quinn movie script and they had like a, let's introduce Batwoman and the Birds of Prey with this script. And then they dropped the Batwoman script and they're like, well, let's just kind of mix them together. That's how it feels. All that being said, I love the side characters. Uh, I think Huntress, I would have loved to have her to have her own film before this. Or just have more in this film. She's yeah. very interesting. There's just a whole a whole bunch of questions that are raised when you find out about Huntress and you think, well, the Bertinellis, they were this big crime family, so what about Bruce Wayne's dad? Mm -hmm. And what about the Gotham Police Department? And I mean, there's just so much that yeah. comes up with that. Side characters for me are a love it. And that is in large part to Black Canary. She got a score of four on our side character chart which is, I think without this movie, the film is barely watchable. Now, I'm gonna preface that by saying, I don't really think it's barely watchable. Yeah. I mean, it's got Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. It's yeah. not barely watchable, but she just brings so much to the table and she's so interesting. Mm -hmm. If you'd built Harley Quinn with a standalone movie, Huntress with a standalone movie, and Black Canary with a standalone movie, the excitement for Birds of Prey when it came out would have been 
off the charts. Now, they might have thought that Huntress was too uh, much of like a fringe character to kind of build a movie around. But that's and why I, it's cool to build a movie around her. Yeah, and I think that's why, I think we'll get our answer at uh, how Morbius does in theaters, because uh, that's kind of, that's like, that's like a fringe Spider-Man character, so. Yeah, I never you, heard of him before. Nobody was asking for that film. Brings us to our next category, which is the villain. Um, the villain in this one is Black Mask. When it comes to the villain category, is it a love it or leave it? For me, it's a leave it. I think there was potential there. I think they hired a great actor in the role in Ewan McGregor. I think he was creepy in the right way and self-serving and without a, a code apart from what serves him and his needs in the moment. He had a good henchman, but I never, I never cared. Like, I don't care if you get your diamond. I don't, there was no moment ever of any redeeming second that made me think, oh, I get this guy. But there was also nothing on the other end of the spectrum that made me go, wow, he's so terrifying. I just can't. Like, oh, see, he I just, wasn't the Joker. I, dis I disagree. I think that he was, I love it because I think that he was someone that, uh, he does, he had no redeeming qualities. He was a straight up villain. He was a bad guy. He was crazy. He was unhinged. He was a psychopath. And there were certain things that he did that made me kind of like look away. He was a bit hammy. Yeah, you know, I think that you know, they were trying to play into the kind of tone of the film and making them like hamming them up a little bit. Uh, I didn't wasn't in love with that, but there were some genuinely uh, disturbing moments, and I thought that it was the most um, not, I don't know about a real villain, but yeah, kind of almost a real villain. Like at least it wasn't a big bad monster. My problem with it was I never cared about the villain, and let me preface this by saying in the in the Marvel universe with Thanos. I didn't care about him. I hated him. I wanted him to die a slow, painful, excruciating death. I don't feel that way about this guy. So like, I don't, I don't care about him, but I'm also- He didn't affect you. I'm also not looking for his end. Like I can't wait for his demise in this. I'm just kind of like, you're gross and a waste of space on the planet. To me, that's not good enough. So for me, that's why this villain was a leave it. He didn't get a visceral emotional response out of me. Moving on to the script. Uh, now for the script, this one was a leave it for me. For me, I would have liked it if Harley Quinn had hid her kind of pain and misery, even from the audience. And like, maybe like there was just one scene where we saw a, a crack in it. But you know, other than that, we didn't really know that she would, that she had broken up the Joker. We didn't really know that, that she was broken hearted about being the Joker. Uh, and kind of like in that scene in Suicide Squad when she thinks he died. So I erred on the side of Love It. I agree with everything you said. I think that um, this movie suffered from a lack of a Harley Quinn movie or a Harley Quinn Joker movie or a Joker movie. Like it feels like there should have been something in between Suicide Squad and this film to make us care. Mm -hmm that Joker and Harley Quinn break up because we don't. I do like the female driven cast. I yeah. do like the female driven superhero team that's also anti-heroes. We very rarely, I think as females, get to see female anti-heroes. So it's nice that here we have a whole team that's saying, screw the system, this screws us over, so we're done playing by these rules, and they go out on their own. I like that. As a female audience member, actually, I love it. Okay, so next up is our impact score. So impact score takes into account humor, heart, action sequences, like, as an audience member, how did this movie impact you? How did so. it make you feel? Yeah, as you're watching. So how did it make you feel? Uh, I, I, for me, this was a love it. I wish the humor would have been a little bit better in this one. Uh, there was a whole egg sandwich bit that I think that was supposed to be funny that I did not really care for. I thought it was very visually appealing and um, you know, I think that the director did a great job with that and uh, this is very visually stylized, a lot like Suicide Squad was. I thought the action scenes were fun. I thought it was had some good choreography in there and uh, you know, Harley Quinn was, was really great in that. Black Canary, another great one. The action sequences I think in this movie were arguably cooler than any action sequences I've seen in any DCEU movie to date. Um, and I also really bought that it was them. The the stunt doubles to them, the film cuts that they did was so flawless. It, it wasn't CGI, it, it was like, it was there and it was great. And I think the soundtrack had some, had some cool tunes in there as well. And they had some little, uh, you know, um, cover songs in there that I think that worked well. So for me overall, it was, it was a slight love it. Like it leaned on the side more towards love it than leave it. 
And see, this is weird because the whole time I've been advocating for this movie, but for me, the impact score was a leave it. I just felt as an audience member that there was too much untapped potential that I felt like everything that they gave me was too easy. Even though I think at the end of the day, I think I enjoyed the movie more than you did. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our final scores. Uh, for me, I gave Birds of Prey a 62. And Shock of the World, we have the exact same score because I also gave it a 62. Uh, which right now make, puts it above uh, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. Uh, Justice League is next. I'm pretty sure this is going to be above Justice League as well. And uh, right now, Suicide Squad and uh, Wonder Woman are the only two films that are above Birds of Prey so far. We haven't done Aquaman, Justice League, or Shazam yet in our rankings. We're going to do those, and then we're going to do our full rankings. So, you know, thanks so much for watching our review. Thank you, everyone. Our score for Birds of Prey was 62, but... That's definitely not definitive.